seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is AJ Capasso here from Talking with the Source, and I'm not even going to ask what that face was. Please, no, uh, don't, no, no. It's just, it's just for you. You know what I mean? Because you know, what I mean, when, when you're handcuffed, they're dipshit for an hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Only you, man. Only you. Anyway, introduce yourself, please. Robin from Halford Paranormal. I'm talking with the Source. Awesome. Real quick, I want to take a shout out to www.globalghosthunt.com. May 4th through the 14th, going to be seen on a bunch of different platforms from Parapost Network um, all the way down the line. So definitely check out www.globalghosthunt.com. See a bunch of teams, live investigations, streaming all 10 days. It's going to be absolutely awesome. So please join us and please forgive me for my dog going nuts in the background. I can't stop it. So I apologize about that. But anyway, please introduce our guest since my dog is being a pain. Right. Well, before I do introduce the guest, I told you before I come on, if you just let the dog hump your leg like at once, then it wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> oh, you. Sorry, man. I have no peanut butter left. I apologize. Sorry, Bob. Oh, well. Yeah, but, yeah, but Peter, try Jello instead. There you go. Anyway, on a better yeah, note. We have. On a better note. No, show up. We up, have. On a better note. Go on. <laughs> On a better note, we have writer, radio host, and also a paranormal researcher, Victoria Monday. I want to bring her out right now. Super happy to have her. Victoria, how Victoria. are you? I have a question first before you start. Um, smoothie or, or creamy? Or no, is it chunky or creamy? Which peanut butter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely the smooth. You know what I mean? We don't go chunky. Around here, you know? okay. Yeah. Well, well, once you go chunky, you don't go. Oh, wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Finally, a guest has joined with us. I love it. Hey! Yes. All right. Anyway, Victoria, when I, first thing I want to ask you is kind of what we ask everybody is, how did you get into the paranormal? Like, I know there's a bunch of different starts from what you told us with the book and everything like that, which we'll get into. But how, what really got you, like, focused into the paranormal? Like, what was it? In the words of David Copperfield, I was born. You know, <laughs> that's it. There we go. There yeah, we go. My first paranormal experience, which I didn't know it was a paranormal experience because, you know, I was two. So, I mean, this has been going on, you know. So, okay. I've heard, yeah, extraterrestrials, which I didn't know they were extraterrestrials um, visiting me. I've seen UFOs. And then my family is has all passed except for my daughter now. And before they passed, they would come, you know, <laughs> pop in. I'm like, hey, nice to see you, Grandpa. And then the next day he would die. It was like my parents, my grandparents, my friends, my husband. You know, pretty anybody I'm close to will just. So you don't want me to dream about you, not in that uh, way. <laughs> oh man, no, no, no. But I mean, that, that you know, you've never funny. met me. You don't even know who I am. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, you didn't come on this show. No, no. I didn't like, contact no. you. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But I'm. It wasn't you. me that contacted you, by the way. It was AJ. <laughs> yeah. Someone. Ooh. Right. <laughs> No, but tell, you were saying something in the background, though, about um, how are you, Humberto? Humberto. Um, we were saying something in the back about um, an online dating in a book. Now, did the paranormal <laughs> reignite for you or what kind of went on? No, it's seriously, it's it's um, it started with. Um, OK, well, let's back up. Um, when I was two, um, I kind of grew up in an abusive household. My dad left when I was eight. So that's that's the background right there in a nutshell. So when I was two, my mom and sister were fighting and they were arguing and screaming and they were in the bedroom next to me. And so kicked me out of the room. So I was jumping on the bed like every two year old should be not doing, you know, so I'm jumping on the bed and I see a light come through the um, the window next to the bed. And I look um, because the trees are making a pattern. And when I look forward, there was a lady sitting or standing in my bedroom and she leans forward and she doesn't move her mouth or anything. And she goes, you know, she's looking over at the room where they're fighting and she goes, you're not like them. You're one of us, you know, and I'm jumping on the bed. So I stop and just kind of look at her and she leans forward. And I didn't realize it was telepathy because, you know, 
two years old. What do you know? <laughs> she goes, you're not like them. You're one of us. And then the tree started shaking and the light started filtering through the window again. I looked back and when I looked forward, she was gone. Now to me, she looked like the little uh, fairy godmother from um, Sleeping Beauty. You know, that was my frame of reference at two. And so, yeah, I could hear my mom and sister stop fighting, you know, so, oh, I better get off the bed. So I get off the bed and I go in there and I ask my mom and I say, who was that lady? She's like, what lady? And I'm like, well, there's a lady in the room with me. You know, I didn't tell her what she said. And she goes, da, 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 da. it's just your imagination told me to go away. And so, you know, that kept happening. And I would tell my mom, you know, I got a movie theater in my head, but you know, I don't know what this means. And she's like, it's your imagination, you know? So I never really told anybody until a couple of years ago. ago. <laughs> I'm very Southern. So there you uh, go. Yeah. Pardon my Southern. It slips out sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so That's um, all right. when uh, I was doing a podcast with Mike Ricksucker called edge of the rabbit hole. And one of the very first persons, you know, we interviewed was a, an idol of mine. Someone I've always looked up to was Andrea Parent. And so somehow we got on that topic and so I started telling her the story and it's like, you know, if you ever meet Andrea, it's word vomit. You just can't stop talking. You know, she's so nice and so sweet. You just tell her your whole life story. Yeah. So I told her and she goes, well, you know who that is, right? And I'm like, well, I, it was one of the fairy godmothers. I don't know which one. There was three. <laughs> she's like, no, that yeah. was extraterrestrial. They came to visit you because that is the message she gave me was like, you're not like them. You're one of us has always comforted me especially through junior high, you know, when you don't fit in, you know, and yeah. then in college, you're a little weird still. And, you know, you don't fit in. And, you know, next mm -hmm. thing you know, you're working in television and you still don't fit in. You know? Yeah. So it's always been a comforting message. Um, you know, so I never really got down on myself when I just didn't click with a group or something. I'm like, well, I'm not like them. I'm one of them. Who they are. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, um, you know, and things that finally, once Andrea told me that things, you know, I, missing time when I saw a UFO and I happened to be pregnant and I was like, Oh, okay. I never put the three together. You know, <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay. Well now it's all starting to make sense. And then um, my mom's side is very, or was very intuitive. They were very um, psychic. If you want to call them that they lived up in East Texas, they did the herbal cures and remedies like, you know, Joe has a burn. Okay. Well, let's put some aloe vera on it. You know, cause there's no CBS <laughs> when you're in the Hills Yeah. My side is actually when I did the genealogy, um, we are German on that side of the family. And I traced the lineage back to the actual Roma gypsies that left um, Germany um, right around 1900. And, you know, shortly after that became the extinction and the annihilation of the Roma gypsies through Hitler, you know, and I was like, well, thank goodness they left, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So wow. when you put those two together, that's where I, my friends jokingly called me the paranormal perfect storm, you know, like when two storms collide. <laughs> Yes. Amen to that. Right. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Hey, but you want to know what, though? That, that's the perfect story, though, because, you know, I mean, not not saying it's a story because it's real, but I'm saying if you think about it, that's like the perfect thing for a story right there. You know, like there's so much background that you have in the parent, you know, with the paranormal and then also having that experience, which Robin, now tell me, I mean, that's wild, isn't it? Like to have an alien come down and say you're one of us. I mean, I would be so I'd be walking through life like, yeah, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I wish that would happen. Well, <laughs> I love that. I thought I, was, that really weird. I thought it was a white's gang, you know. I mean, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. right. I want to be a Disney uh, princess. <laughs> yeah, hey, see, you never know. I mean, that's so awesome. That that is such an awesome experience. Now, how did you get into um get into like you know the radio side and stuff like that and start going into the paranormal route with the, all that type of stuff as well? Again, purely accidental. <laughs> really? Because okay. um, I was watching YouTube and I started following um, Haunted Road Media which, um, you know, there's a lot of people who run around with flashlights in the dark and they scare themselves silly. Right. And that's not really not my thing because I don't, no, yeah, I don't go that route, but uh, haunted road media had a lot of really well done, you know, video shorts, like we're here, you know, we're going to talk about quantum physics. We're going to talk about time travel and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, they, um, did a live show, a YouTube podcast and it was called edge of the rabbit hole. And so I just started watching it and, you know, there was a live streaming chat like I'll have. And so I would just, you know, pipe in my questions and every now and then I would stump the host, you know, it was Mike Ricksecker and he's like, well, I don't know. And then, you know, then he would come up with an answer. And so again, yeah, the other co-host Vanessa Hogle decided she was going to move on to other projects. And so um, she told him, okay, I'm out. And so my little voice that I always hear goes, tell him you want the job. I'm like, well, okay. 
And so <laughs> by this time, Mike and I were friends. And so I kind of sent him a message and said, you know, I would like to throw my hat in the ring. And he goes, okay, okay, okay. You know, lots of people want this job. And I'm thinking, well, I have no chance because I'm a nobody. You know, I, I was a master control operator. You know, nobody knew me. I wasn't famous. Yeah. I didn't have books. You know, nobody saw my face. Um, well, it turns out I was the first one he um, interviewed, you know, for the role, you know, if you want to call it that. Um, I did the first test podcast with him. And he goes, well, let's just keep it, you know. And so I was on there for a couple of years, almost, you know, almost two years with him. Um, and it turns out, you know, almost before the, the show was over at the very end, we found out that we were cousins, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. So, what are the odds? What are I the know. odds? <laughs> wow. Uh, See, it was it's a real thing as well, isn't it? It's, it's the old saying, you don't ask, you don't get. Right. You know, but I had... Um, at that point in time, I had, you know, lost my husband. I just lost my dad, you know, and I lost everybody in my life except my daughter. And I'm like, well, what the hell? I'm just going to start listening to the little voices, you know, and do whatever they say, you know, unless it's going to bring harm to somebody. And that's how I ended yeah. up in this little town knowing no one. But anyway, it's a good thing. Um, yeah. So my little voice goes, tell him you want the job. I'm like, what the heck? So and it turned out to be a wonderful thing because, you know, once I started doing that, my name got out there just a little bit. And um, so, you know, I started making more friends and making more connections in the paranormal world. And then, you know, like, oh, let's go here and investigate. And so I just got back from West Texas. <laughs> that was a drive. So I spent the oh, no. yesterday with the Ghost Brothers. Um, we were out there investigating with like 50 other people, uh, an old brothel. So, I mean, that was a lot of fun. Wow, that's so cool. Now, did you guys did get, you get much activity? Yeah. Well, what kind of activity? Paranormal? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Well>, anything. <laughs> yeah, right. Any activity now. Lips are so. <laughs> well, there, there's so many people there, and that's a good thing, you know, because um, the people that own um, the Old Park Hotel are just wonderful, and I love them to death, and we've been friends for years, and they're getting, you know, lots and lots of celebrity um, groups out there, and so that's really great for them, and I'm happy that that's happening. Um, but because of that, they had such a huge draw. You couldn't walk around to do an EVP or anything because you. Know, 50 people there you know so um i was there with some friends and so we just sat back and we watched them we were in the environment we saw um like people who've never done a ghost investigation before they were there you know they had like um they had something like a frank's box but it wasn't a frank's box but um anyway but they were getting a lot of voice recording or uh voice responses you know and i was like at one time there is a very notorious um gunslinger if you want to call him that who frequents that place. You know, I've met him. I've been to his grave. He's up here in, you know, very close to Fort Worth. So um, I've gone to visit him there. I've gotten pictures of him and he always comes through the spirit box when we use it. And so last night, um, Dalen from the Ghost Brothers was using his device and his voice kept coming through and he was trying to um, contact the spirit uh, who we call Deacon. His name is J.B. Miller. Um, but his nickname was Deacon because he was so well respected in the church, right? And then he would go out and shoot people after, you know, after. Oh, after geez, yeah. So yeah. he was a very notorious gunslinger, um, but he has a very raspy, deep, groggly voice. And that voice kept coming through, and they were trying to make contact with him. And I said, "That's Deacon you're talking to." You know, and he's like, "Oh my God!" So then we get, started getting really, really good responses because um, he asked him at one time. He goes, "I don't know." Uh, how is profanity on the this? I don't want to. Oh, no, no, please. Oh, no, please. Go oh, ahead. Okay. okay. Yeah. So um, they were asking him, was like, you know, Deacon, why are you here? And he's like, ah, kill. And I was like, oh my gosh. And he's like, Deacon, why are you really here? And he goes, the sluts. I'm like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> you know, you're in a brothel. Why not? You know, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are you? And then Deacon goes, Red Room. And the Red Room is actual, an uh, actual room right around the corner from where we were. It's, you know, red. Wow. It's got red velvet wallpaper and there's a red bedspread and that is the brothel room or yeah. one of the ones that have been restored that, that makes me wonder that makes me wonder that no you like, can't go and work there aj it's not working anymore no, no 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 what i was trying to say was it's, it makes me think that like he was in the red room as he was saying right and we were communicating you guys were communicating with him and the crazy part about that what i think like just this is totally just like a theory and paranormal but I wonder if we're tapping into that whole reality that they're in or that whatever word that they are in, like that realm, because he's in a, in another room. You're not in the same room. So how are you guys actually communicating? So that's how I always wondered, like, you know, is it just the frequency based? You know what I mean? And are we just tapping into the circuit frequency at that moment 
where he's coming through, you know, like, what are your, what are your opinions on something that just happened that night? That's funny. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I, I gave a presentation at a, a pair conference um, here in Texas and it was called, um, I don't know if you're into business or anything, but it was called the paranormal Peter principle. You know, okay. <laughs> if you know what the Peter principle is. Yeah, it's, yeah. I have a little knowledge of, it, I think it's, it's like, you're only as smart as your ignorance basically. <laughs> so it was like uh, a backhand slap kind of, but yep. the, real, the real talk about, or the real meat of the um, presentation was about raising your vibration and living it like through your heart chakra and above. And when you live in a higher frequency, you can connect with higher frequencies. And I think that's where yep. spirits are. And usually I wear a Moldavite um, uh, pendant, mm -hmm. but I exploded it the other day. I looked down, I had Moldavite all over me. So I was, I was really putting out some energy, but um, right. If you stay in a higher frequency, and I think we all were there because there was so much euphoria and so much excitement, and we were just all excited, you know, to be in the brothel, to be in the haunted part, and the Ghost Brothers were there. We were really connecting, and I, I think that's one reason, you know, we were able to make such good I, connections. I, told, I totally agree because any time that I make the best connection, especially with my spirit box, is when I'm in the best mood. Mm -hmm. If I'm not in a good mood, and I, I won't go and do it because I just know – that I just won't connect with with the spirits that I'm looking to connect with, and I just wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? And I'll just wait you know, till I'm in. Do you not think as well? So uh, sorry to interrupt you, AJ, but I, I need to ask this question, and it's to both of you actually. Do you not think as well that when you're talking about this, it's like if someone says, "Like I seen a gray mist," it's somebody, it's a spirit because it's a mist, right? But a mist can be a small little ball, or a mist can fill a whole room. So if that mist is a spirit, why couldn't it be in that room and also be with you where the spirit box is? Because that mist can expand as far. So that person, instead of being this size when they're alive, when they're gone, it's like they can be any size they want to be. Yeah. yeah, I believe it they can, yeah. Go ahead, I've Victoria. I've seen that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I've seen no. that. And I'm sure y'all have been there too, where you've been in a room and it gets darker than dark and you're like, how yeah. it get darker than dark. And then it gets darker and you're like, how is this, how can you get darker than dark? You know, and yeah. that, something comes in and just totally blocks your vision. I mean, I've been in places where I couldn't even, you know, see my hand like this. I'm like, I know my hand is right in front of my face. It was there five yeah. minutes ago, you know, and then it it's was, like, yeah. No, sorry, finish, please finish. I apologize. I didn't mean to cut oh, you off. It, it just oh, lifts no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I what I was gonna say was it's funny that you say that because I always think in energy and I always think that the matter in that room just it, it like affects the matter in the room and the matter just changes like because how do you see darker than dark? You know what I mean? How do we notice yeah. that change? It's like how do you get darker than dark? You know, so it's you know, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah, because I've been in rooms, you know, and there have been like chairs and I've been sitting in total darkness and then the chairs will disappear. Now unless I'm going somewhere, which I don't really think I am. Uh, you know? yeah. <laughs> between me and the chair and it is blocking my view. And so it is getting darker than the darkness. So I, it's just quantum physics. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I, I also think it's to do with, it's to do with your eyesight as well, because if you go in there, if you go in their room and you turn the lights off and it's pitch black after a few, after a few minutes, even though it's pitch black, you will see the outline of stuff in the room. Right. So the room, you know, in my eyes, the room is never pitch black. Your eyes are accustomed to the to the surroundings, and you can see. So that's when I think when you say darker than dark, if you're in the room for five ten minutes and you can see absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. then there's obviously something in there uh, affecting the the room or affecting you because you will, no matter how dark it is, you will eventually see your surroundings. Right. Yeah, we were in a, um, yeah, my favorite places to go, apparently, we have a lot of them here in Texas, are brothels, you know, because that's where all the fun was, that's where all the exuberance was, that's the higher vibrations. And so I was, make my way over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say they're not active, but they are active, you know. So yeah. <laughs> you can get yeah. a lot of EVPs and stuff, but I was in one room, and like you said, we had been in there probably 15, 20 minutes, and we had a Frank's box and you could feel the heaviness and it's just like a weight in the room and there was nothing going on. All the, um, nothing was coming over the Frank's box. And um, that's when we couldn't see anymore. You know, it was like, it was oppressive. You couldn't see and all the equipment was silent. And then um, probably that lasted maybe 10 minutes or so. And then it started getting a little bit lighter and you could, um, 
start to see outlines of things again. And then it coincided with the Frank's box. You could hear little children laughing. And it sounded almost like a Doppler effect where they were like running around the, the top of the, uh, wow. it was like a now, platform up at the top of the staircase. Do you have a uh, Frank's box? No, I'm poor. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say Frank's boxes are serious. They're old school and they're, they're a lot of money. So that's why I was asking, because I love those things. I mean, I wish I can get my hands on one if I had the money too, or that or a DR60 recorder. Like, oh, I would have loved to get my hands on one of those too, but there's just too much money. But every time you say Frank's box, I had to ask you because Frank no. Sumption is the one who started this whole like ITC thing for me. So it was like, you know, it's amazing to hear his name. I, I have friends who have one and I'd like, you know, my birthday's coming up in a year they're like yeah we'll, we'll get on that <laughs> give me a couple thousand i'm like no <laughs> what's up Dan? How are you? so robin go ahead and continue with the question man or continue with the questions because i know you want to ask one no it's just a, a, again the, the whole it, it goes into a whole conversation about this uh you know spirits and 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 how how sort of big and how small it can be because we obviously assume that if we're if we make contact with a spirit in a building then we're obviously like right there in front of it and then but it's it's, it's not feasible that the, the spirit could also be actually in a room next to you or it could be down the corridor or it could be upstairs or whatever and it's just you know to me the spirit will actually expand to the size it needs to to be in several places at once. That's you know that's a weird way to look at it. I never thought of it that way. I actually the only way that I used to think about it was that the energy would split and I would see you know that they could be simultaneously and anywhere at any time. It, the way that spirit said it to me through a spirit box was think of like a a CD and how we can only listen to one track at a time, like first track, second track of the whole CD. But with spirit, they can listen to one through 12 simultaneously at the exact same time. And they can understand every single part of each one of them. So mm -hmm. it's like, that's the way that they described to me. So it's funny that you said it that way, because I never thought of a spirit expanding like that. Like, would you think of it that way? Or how would you think of it, Victoria? Yeah. Um, a lot of people, I don't want to knock anybody, but they run around with, um, you know, equipment that measures electricity and electric frequencies. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's that. I think it's more of a harmonic or vibration. Uh, or audio, there was, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the man. Was Vic now, what, do you think, what do you think though happens when they activate those those devices before you get into what you're about to say? What do you think though when they do activate those devices? Well, that's what, um, there is a, he's in the UK. You probably know who he is. Um, he passed not too long ago. His name was Vic and I can't remember his last name, but he did um, studies with infrasound. So the lower vibrations that we actually can't hear because yep. um, I can hear my ceiling fan. That was his whole deal was he was in one part of his lab. And whenever he got near, um, he got the creepy feelings like somebody was watching him. And these were all side effects of the infrasound. Um, and when he turned the fan off, then it went away. So it may not be the electricity. It's just a like it's a thing I always say with my daughter when she was little. We were watching something and the, the signal went out on the TV. So she went and turned the TV off and turned it back on. And she goes, I fixed it. I'm like, well, honey. No, no, you didn't. You know, <laughs> that's what I do for a living. I, I was a, at that time. I was a, a TV engineer, and I was like, no, no, honey, you, it was just a, a coincidence that you turned it off and you turned it on. By the time you turned it on, they had fixed the signal back at the station. Yeah. Like, no, no, I fixed it. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna tell you anything. Uh, but yeah. the people who are running around with the EMFs and the, you know, the K2s and all that kind of stuff, they are measuring an electrical frequency. But I don't think that's the answer. I think it is the sound frequency or the vibration frequency because you know people are always saying oh vibe high think about when you um when your mom brought you a birthday cake when you were little or when somebody said dad give me a lolly you know he was like putting it out from you know his heart chakra and it was a higher vibration and you're like oh yeah. i wish i could do this it's never like you your mom brought you a, a birthday cake and you say i'm going to manifest a pony no you say i'm going to yeah. wish i had a pony because it's a higher yeah. Vibration, mm -hmm. it's a higher frequency, and that's how you connect with all the you know multi dimensions and everything, and all the ghosts and spirits, and you know, Napoleon yeah. and Cleopatra and all that. Yeah, I think so as well, but getting, getting back to what I was saying, uh, sorry, AJ, I, I, you know, because I really do believe this, and it's like, you know, I've been investigating places over here, you know, maybe an old motel or an old pub with a hotel built on it or whatever, or even a, even sometimes a house, and you know, 
you'll be in there and you'll either be just with your own team or maybe with a, with a couple of others. And, you know, and, and I find myself saying it sometimes where I've connected with the spirit upstairs and then I maybe I come downstairs and I connect and I'm like, you know, do you know the person that was upstairs a minute ago? Because I was speaking. And then I think to myself, how do I not know that's the same person that's also here? Do you know what I mean? How, how do you... Obviously, once you once you make contact and you get the details and stuff, and, and if it's all the same, then you obviously you know you, you think right. Well, it's the same person, but there's there's no there's no meaning to say that either the spirit didn't a follow you from upstairs down, or whether the spirit was originally with you and followed you back upstairs and then back down again, or is the spirit just like growing in energy that much? Where it's like, well, I'm based up here. This is where I want to be up here, but I want to speak to you down there as well. We just, we just don't know that, and that's that's one thing about it that fascinates me. Yeah, I think they're omnipotent, if that's the correct word to use. Because uh, last <laughs> night, it's a very long hallway where we were, and in the very, very, very last room, there were a group of investigators, and they again they had their little spirit box going, um, and they were picking up on some sort of energy in the closet. And so they were saying, okay, who's in the closet? Who's in the closet? And the little spirit box said, Mike. Now I was like five, six rooms down the hall. Um, I was sitting on the bed and there was another individual who was in the closet. And so we come out and we go down the hall and like, Hey, what's going on? And they're like, Oh, well, you know, we're doing the spirit box session. And they were saying like, there's um, somebody named Mike that's in the closet. Turns out the guy that I was in that room with down there, his name was Mike. <laughs> I was like, how did you know? <laughs> Mike was wow. in the closet, like five rooms down the hall. So I don't know. It's like you said, they know everything. It's it's and I think it's easier. Not that I exceed the maximum legal speed limit, you know, posted in a car. But I looked down yesterday and I was going 102 and I was like, oh, my God, how the hell did that happen? But I was, you know, once you get going faster, like a higher vibration, it's easier just to keep going, you know, keep modulating like that. You're muted, AJ. Sorry, dog was going nuts. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And that's why I love doing this podcast because meeting so many different people and we all have different, you know, ways of looking at this, similar ways, but different in a little, a little bit of aspects. And I love it because there's things that I never would have thought of. Like when you said that, Robin, before in the way that you said this, uh, you know, Victoria, like I never would have thought of it in that kind of context. And especially with the harmonic, you know, from your heart chakra and stuff like that and, and looking at it from that, that type of frequency like a infrasound type way what you were talking about i think that's very smart and i think that like i think that it's a mix of a couple things to be honest with you because if you think about it, like electromagnetic field for emf it could be the magnetic field that's interacting with the electromagnetic field you know what i mean and it could be something magnetic that that is doing that as well that that type of energy but you're right because it could be a total infrasound and it could be you know something completely just one simple thing that we just can't understand and i think a lot of cases in homes with the hold on one sec, Robin. With the fan and stuff, I think we do experience that. I do. We, we do experience the infrasound. But go ahead. What you're going to say, man? No, because I was just going to say as well. And this this really this gets into the the real like crux of it, really. But like, how many times have we been doing a spirit box session on here, where it's just been you and me? You've been doing a spirit box session you're in, and my partner who passed away, Julie, in in January, who is supposedly here with me the, all the time but yet yeah. was coming through in a spirit box session in your end so when yeah. you think about it that's three thousand odd mile that is a lot of ground to cover so is that energy actually expanding that much or is it just possible for that that spirit to be right. in two think different places do they split in half well, that's what I'm saying. That, that that energy, like we don't know. We don't know what that energy is. We don't know if that energy is definitely from our, you know, like the, what she was saying about, you know, infrasound and about, you know, heart chakra and the harmonics and stuff like that of it. Um, we don't know if it's that. We don't know if the energy expands all the way out there. Because if you think about it, if it's going to expand all the way out there, that means it has to rapidly expand, answer the question and rapidly come back like an elastic band. Not saying it couldn't do it. Just saying that's pretty wild because all this paranormal activity all over the world would be going like this and the whole world would be snapping back and forth in my opinion so i just don't personally see it happening but that's a good way of thinking of it because i never would have thought of it that way i think that's yeah. great do you know what mica is are you familiar with gemstones or, or a not? little yeah a little bit yeah but you know it's real flaky it's like phyllo dough you know it's oh, okay i know i know what mica you're talking like, about yeah baklava or something 
But yep. the way I was trying to explain it to my friends um, is like, if you look at it and you're holding it this way, it just looks like one solid piece, right? And so that would be our, our 3D, our three dimensional world. But if you turn it and shift it just a little bit, you can see all the layers and it takes all these layers pressed together to make that one little 3D world. So if you change your perspective, change your vision, change your harmonics, change your whatever, um, you know, live in the woo woo as I call it. <laughs> I love you, it. Um, who's to say that it's not snapping back and forth, it's just there. And now that when you're up in that realm, it's like a watercolor, you know, it's, it's not, you know, a line, it, it's meshing like together that. like that. So I, like that. I try, a lot of people call me a blonde or, you know, sleeping beauty or snow white, or <laughs> I got snow white so much because, you know, I'd open the door and there'd be a stray cat. I'm like, well, come on, come live with us. Yeah, right. so, you know, but who's to say that's not being attracted because of the vibration I put out. Um, Certainly it's not men and dating because that's, that would be the uh, other. <laughs> that's every woman's downfall for some reason. It seems like. That's why I don't date no more. That's why I literally just stayed by myself. I'm like, you know what? I'll just wait for something to come to me because I'm not even going to bother wasting my time in the dating world. <laughs> you know? Watch it. It'll be a cat. Cause we ended up with. Yeah, it'll be a cat. <laughs> I already have one that comes, believe it or not. I have yeah. a cat that's the neighbor's cat that comes to me in the back of back, back of the house. Anytime I'm upset. It's really we call, weird. We call that the starter cat. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I already had a cat once. So, you know, unfortunately it passed and I never wanted to get another animal. But, you know, I, I this cat just came to me and it's so funny because it's it, it acts exactly the same as the cat that passed. So I'm like, oh, reincarnation right here, you know? Well, I've actually... So, heard so technically, is this turning into a singles podcast then? <laughs> oh, My cat ahead. just walked in. My cat just walked in. Did you hear him? Oh, no, I didn't. No. English. He, he came in and said, Mom. <laughs> That's great. Down here. But actually, I rescued him during the middle of a hurricane. Oh, that's he was awesome. The middle cat, number um, number three out of five. And he was just a kitten. And, um, you know, the squall was coming through and then it was quiet for a little bit. And I heard it, some, it sounded like a baby going, Mom, Mom. I was like, Holy crap. You know, and I go running downstairs and I throw the door open and we lived in an apartment, my daughter and I. And, the, the river overflowed into the creek. The creek overflowed into the lake and the lake was overflowing into our apartment. And there was this little kitten. And I was like, oh, crap. You know, and so I just throw my arms open and say, come here, cat. I'm wow. not a cat person. And he comes yeah. running and he jumps in my arms. And I'm like, okay, well, now we have number three. But, yeah. um, but when I was Wait, at work. You're not a cat person. Yeah. No, I'm not. They're, I'm their people. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. I was at work when um, my dad passed. And so I came home, you know, during the middle of the day. I didn't say anything. And when I came home, I opened the garage door. You know, you know, cats don't meet you at the door. He was yeah. there waiting for me. And I was yeah. like, how did you know? You I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, he's down yeah. here. Now. My cat was exactly the same. My cat would like sit on my chest, fall asleep at nighttime. Literally, if I had my, my girlfriend over at the time, he would, she would, I'd wake up and she would wake up with a cat right here in her face, just looking at her like, because it was a female cat. Yeah. Very protective of me. Yeah, so it, was, it was very funny. Well, very funny, uh, we, ha but. we have a, a saying. I'm sure you've heard it that um, cats and dogs are actually aliens that have come to Earth. You know, I wouldn't millions, believe. It. I wouldn't doubt it. Well, you know, gazillions of years ago, before you know, when the Nephilim are here or whatever, um, and they were here to teach us how to love unconditionally. Yeah, and so I, I mean, that. I believe they were sent here to do that because it's the one thing in in, in the world that will love you no matter what. No yep. matter what you do to it, even a dog that's been abused for years may start off to be that way. But if you treat it with love, it'll come right back to its normal self. And it's just so crazy because if us humans can adopt anything like that, our spirits would be so much, I think, higher frequency and higher raised, honestly. Well, you know what that is? That's living through your heart chakra. Yeah. Recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> so Absolutely. maybe the lottery tickets, lottery tickets, hopefully will <laughs> come that way. Right. Right. Hey, I've asked that one time through the, the spirit box. We got a bunch of numbers we played, but we didn't win anything. Yeah, unfortunately. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know. They were just giving us numbers. I was a little upset. But anyway, what I wanted to ask you was, what was one of your most terrifying experiences that you've ever had? Or would you not call any of them terrifying? No, I've never. Well, I mean, I've had terrifying experiences, but they've always been with living people. You know? Yeah, yeah. Nothing with the spirit world. I was okay. in a, a brothel one time and a lot of people, I don't know if it's because I have a kind of a bubbly nature and I don't dress in all black all the time. Well, sometimes I do. Um, and my eyeliner is because I like to wear a lot of eyeliner, but I don't look like the gothy, you know, 
pentacle tattooed. I do have a tattoo, but it's not the only thing. Okay, I'll just be quiet. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, have, I have a very light nature. And when I say things, people are like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 not us. Yeah, yeah oh, no, no, I feel scared. So I was in a brothel and I was standing and I get claustrophobic. So I was standing at the top of the staircase and everybody else oh, yeah. were in three different rooms. And I was out there and like, oh, I smell whiskey, you know, and you know, there's nobody drinking, you know, I was like, yeah. there's just whiskey I smell. And then I smelled, there's no easy way to describe this stinky man. It just smelled like a stinky man. So yeah. it Flat smelled like nasty. Yeah. two men were there. And then um, my friend came out and he goes, what's going on? I was like, I smell whiskey and a stinky man. And then I could feel like a pressure on the front of me that smelled like whiskey and the pressure behind me smelled like stinky man. And I realized I was becoming an Oreo, you know, because there was mm. some, you know, twisting of the Oreo cookie wafers. Uh, and I'm like, oh my God. And I stomped uh, my heart. What I want to know is, AJ, why were you there? Yeah, yeah. He's looking for the peanut butter. No, anyway, just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I told my friend what, it, what I was smelling and he's like, mm -hmm, yeah, right. And a couple of minutes yeah. later in another room, you hear another female going, oh my God, what does that smell? You know, and then yeah. a few minutes later in another room, you're like, oh, my God. And so it was traveling around. I was like, I told you, you know, you know yeah. I don't know if they were doing the Oreo twist or, you know, if you could just smell them in the room. But then it was a brothel, you know, and um, there was bootlegging at that time when that brothel was built. Um, so it makes sense. That it smelled like, you know, sweaty, stinky man who smells like whiskey. But um, oh, yeah, that was no, that's, that's yeah. It was uncomfortable, but it wasn't terrifying because you know once I snapped back and I realized I was being touched, I'm like, well, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I get totally get what you're saying. Yeah, no, that I mean that's a that's a freaky situation, not a scary situation, definitely. But you I mean you, you seem like you're very used to your ability that you have the you know the abilities that you have, so you you seem very tuned into yourself. Now I wanted to ask you, how do you personally go about raising your vibration every day? It's through choice. That you do? Through, through choice. choice. I, I have had, not to, you know, belittle my upbringing, you know, I've yeah. had a crappy life and I chose yeah. not to embrace that anymore. And um, unfortunately, my family is all past, except for my daughter, which I love dearly. And she asked me one time, she goes, why are we not like them? And I was like, because I chose not to be like them. You know, we moved yeah. away. We yeah. were not like them. So, I mean, yeah. like I lost my job a couple of weeks ago. I was laid off and I, was, I could be crying. Like, oh, why can't I have a job? But instead, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go out to West Texas and hang out in a brothel with the Ghost Brothers. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'll look for Why a job. <laughs> so. Yeah, you'll look for a job when you get back. Yeah, no, I, you know what? That's so great because a lot of people, I think, need to have that kind of aspect in life. And we don't. We get so caught up in things and yeah. the worries of life, you know, and I, and I totally get it. And, and it's very hard to live that way. It really is. I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, it's easier said than done. And it, it is. But you have to train yourself because if you're not that type of person to just be able to switch it off, you know, train yourself to, to make those little choices every day, like you were saying. And after time, you'll be able to wake up like you do and just be like, yep, I'm not going to live like that no more, you know. And yeah. uh, you know, Absolutely. You know, I was working at one company. It was a very huge entertainment behemoth. And when they merged with the company that we were actually working with, they laid us all off. And we knew it was coming. Um, and my coworkers would come down. They're like, oh, my God, have you found a job? I'm like, no, nope, doesn't really matter because in the end, we're going to die. So and they're like, yeah. OK, get out of here. Wow. They're like, thanks, Victoria. Thanks. Like, yeah. <laughs> Real morbid. We love it doesn't matter. We're going to die. <laughs> yeah, Here's yeah, the right. positive outlook. <laughs> right? I love it. I love it. Yeah. Go ahead, so, Robin. Victoria, what I was wanting to ask you was uh, I was wanting uh, to get into your uh, your author side of it all. I want you to obviously tell the viewers about your, your books that you've written and what actually made you get into uh, writing the books and stuff like that. Well, it was during my layoff because um, it took me nine months to find a job, you know, and I was really depressed and the little voices were like, get off your ass. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? You know? <laughs> like, Come on, we're going to go to Jefferson, which is another town in Texas. And it was about, I don't know, five or six hours away. I'm like, well, what am I going to do there? And they're like, I don't know. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I get up, I go online. There's a haunted hotel there. I don't know any of the stories or anything. So I go online and and they have the pictures of the rooms because each room is themed. And so I was, you know, doing this bit, trying not to read what's happening in the room. And it's like, okay, I like this one. I'm going to, you know, get this room. And so I drive up there. It was like on a Wednesday, right before Valentine's Day, you know, because with me, everything goes back to not dating, you know. <laughs> I'm alone. Anyway, so I, I 
drive up to this hotel. Um, and so the owner walks me up to my room and he goes, so, you know, about this, this, this hotel, right? I'm like, no, no, I, I know it's haunted. The town's haunted. I know that. He's like, oh, well, why did you pick this room? Again, I'm going to sound like an airhead. And I'm like, well, I picked it because it had the prettiest bed. I didn't want to tell him that, you know, because <laughs> that's really why I picked it. It was this beautiful carved headboard. And it was really tall, with these elaborate pillows and everything. And it looked like a nice room to me. I said, well, I, I don't know. I just thought it was the nicest looking room. So I picked it. And he's like, okay, well, this is our most active room. It's like, oh, well, of course it is. You know, <laughs> My little voice told me to get it. He goes, wow. we call this one the bride's room. There was a woman who hung herself because she was jilted on her wedding day from the top of the head headboard. I'm like, well, of course it is. Happy Valentine's Day. You know, I'll just be down here with a dead bride. Right. So, you know, so he's checking me in. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon, 2.30. And um, he goes, well, nobody else checked in the room to, or in the hotel tonight. So you have the whole place to yourself. You can look around if you want. I'm like, right. I'm here by myself. Okay. Oh, man. And then he goes, and, and it's way off in East Texas, you know, almost in Louisiana. And he goes, okay, we're going to go to town and we'll be back in a couple hours. I'm like, okay, you're not going to be in this town. <laughs> you're leaving. Wow. And so the door has a punch code, which I felt very safe that, you know, onlookers and vampires could not come in because, you know, I won't be inviting them in. And so he goes, here's my phone number. Just call me if you need anything. And so he was yeah. gone. And so I was literally in this haunted hotel, thankfully during the day, <laughs> all by myself. And so I started walking around and, you know, the, there's one room where it was a doll room and it has all these dolls, everything you can imagine. I mean, they're like tall as me or little Barbie dolls, weird broken head clown dolls and everything. And um, I'm like, hey, you know, I, I really don't like dolls. I mean, I like Barbie. You know, I like those kind of dolls, the collectible ones. But um, so um I looked in, I said, hey, I'm Victoria. Can I? And they have ropes across the door. Um, so you don't go in there. And I was like, oh. can I take pictures? So I was just taking some pictures and I said, thanks a lot, you know. And so I always point. I don't know why I always do that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give them the guns. Yeah. The guns. I'm like, hey, yep. can I take a picture? <laughs> so I'm, I'm like maybe 10, 12 feet down the hall and I hear, <laughs> I'm like, well, that's weird. That, that's a motion activated doll. It has to be. But why was it? so delayed you know what, what was the delay in the trigger yeah. so i go along and i see a bunch of other things and a lot of things happen to me and so when the owner comes back he's like how's it going i was like oh yeah it was great you know i there's a hidden staircase i found you know don't leave me alone in a hotel because i'll be opening up all the cabinets and you oh, open up an armoire. there's an armoire downstairs and it leads upstairs i'm like okay well here i go you know <laughs> so, oh, so then i that's when i actualized my um claustrophobia you know, so I was calling it the armoire of death because I was pretty sure I was going to die in there. So I decided to go YouTube live. So if I were to die, people would know where I was. Anyway, um, so I got back upstairs and uh, I was talking to him and I said, why did it take so long for your doll to giggle? And he goes, we don't have any motion activated dolls. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. So I was having a great time. And when I got back, I was um, telling a friend of mine, I was like, oh, and then, blah, 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 and then, blah, 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 you know, and he goes, you need to write a book about this. I'm like, okay, why not? You know, I'm not going to say no anymore. You know, I, whenever something comes and is presented to me, I'm going to say yes, unless it's going to hurt somebody. And yep. so I wrote a book. And then um, last summer, yeah, it's about this time last year, um, Beyond the Fray, which is a publishing house, which specializes in paranormal and true crime genres, had a thing on YouTube or um, Facebook, a little ad saying, we're looking for nonfiction submissions. And I'm like, okay. So, I mean, all they, all they can do is say no. Yeah. So I submitted it and they're like, this is great. Can you make it bigger? You know, can you like double it in size? So I went back last November and I um, I had more adventures. It's crazy there. The whole town's freakingly haunted. Wow. All those stories in there. So now it's a big book. Um, and they actually published it in February, which was almost exactly a year from when I went and had my original hijinks or whatever, fun, or whatever you want to call it, my, my vacay. That is awesome. <laughs> That is so, so awesome. Always say yes. That's Absolutely. Yeah. And take every opportunity you can get. I mean, oh, that yeah. just shows it right there. You know, I mean, some things that have just been lined right up. I mean, it seems like for you, like, it seems like everything that's happened, no matter good or bad, it seemed like there was a reason for everything. 
You know, that's yeah. from what I've been hearing from you. And like every little thing has been lined up for you, it seems, throughout your life. And it's just so wild to see because I try to tell people this through everyone's life. We have these things, these synchronicities. If we just paid attention, we would be able to understand that there's a bigger picture. Don't worry about this. Or there's something that's coming because it's happened in the past before, just in a different mm-hmm. context. And, you know, it's just so great to see. Um, that you embrace that. And I just think that's so awesome. Please um, discuss the book you have with you, though. This one? Which one? Yeah, please, please show that one. The one, well, the one that you wanted to, yeah. yeah. This is the one, so, this is ahead, the one about staying in the Jefferson Hotel. Um, but, oh, here's here's a crazy story in here. So, um, you know, the movie screen in my mind, right? It's, um, yeah. <laughs> so while I was um, coming up out of the bootlegger armoire of death, I could see a, a man behind me with my third eye, you know, and I was like, I'm not going to not turn around, you know? <laughs> and so um, he was a scary kind of man. Um, he looked more curious because he was like standing at the staircase, just leaning over like, what's that down there? And why is there somebody here in the middle of the day? Like he didn't recognize me. And, he, and, and I described him perfectly to the owner and everything. And he goes, well, you know about Steven Spielberg, right? I'm like, well, yeah, I know who he is. You know, I don't know anything related to this. And he's like, well, when he was making um, Sugarland Express back in the seventies, he was staying across the street in another hotel. And the street is very small and it's an old town. And he said, he woke up in the middle of the night and he saw this man and he knew he was a ghost. It scared him so badly. He woke his entire crew up. They got out of the hotel at like two o'clock in the morning and they went about 20 miles down the road and stayed in another town. I was like, get out. And he goes, yeah, that man later became the hat man in the poltergeist movies. I was like, no way. Well, I don't oh, remember. Wow. I don't remember the poltergeist movie. So when the owner walks no, away, yeah. I'm getting my phone and I'm looking, you know, I'm like, well, yeah. who's the man? Um, but this is what he looked like. This is the guy I saw. Oh, so wow. and so he goes, he goes, that's the guy who he turned him into the hat man. So I've never seen the other poltergeist movie. So I don't know who the hat man is, but wow. anyway. So um that's, but, uh, that's actually that's a really good drawing though of him. Of what you saw, because that, that's that's a lot of detail in that. That's one of the things I'm learning is when I was laid off, I'm teaching myself graphic design and how to do well, You're doing awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing awesome. I would never be able to do something like that. Oh, my gosh. Ah, drawing. Drawing is easy. I don't, I don't have any of my drawings behind me. Those I wish good. I could draw. See, I'm terrible. I'm like stick figure type person, you know? Oh. So like, I don't really, I can't really do anything other than that. Yeah. And even, even then it gets wrong. Please keep <laughs> going on what you're saying, though, oh. about the next book. Oh, that's my... My photography back there. You oh can't no see way! It. So that's, I do see it. A little white picture on the bottom right there. It's a it's a lake and it's reflected. Anyway, yep. Yep. that's right, right. Exactly. Yep. Hidden Planet. That's my favorite movie. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was telling y'all before, um, you know how it is. My husband died a long time ago, and so I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm like, you know, I might want to start dating again. So I'm just gonna do it online. So I was chatting with this gentleman. And he's like, "What do you like to do for fun?" I'm like. I really don't think I should tell you. <laughs> He's like, no, what do you do? And I'm like, well, you know, what, what's your favorite pizza? He's like, no, what do you do? I'm like, well, I, I hang out in brothels and I talk to dead people. Okay. <laughs> Just like, every, you know, definitely like every day occurrence, really, isn't it? Just, yeah. Definitely a conversation good. starter. That's what all the Southern girls do. Oh, hello. Oh, it's my cat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, He's like, what? And so I started telling him some of the things I've done. He's like, oh, my God, you need to write a book. And I personally don't think any of this is scary because, you know, I, I I think if you go into a situation thinking the house is going to be haunted, the house is going to be evil, I'm going to get scratched, I'm going to get pushed down the stairs, you're creating a tulpa. And that's what generates that. So, again, it's back to your vibration. Are you going to be high or low? So I'd rather be high. I'd rather be high <laughs> in vibration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so what am I going to do? Call it Victoria Monday's Paranormal Activities and make it a coloring book? Hey, I did that. <laughs> so, yes. so here's Check this out, everyone. It's Victoria. Wait, how's this straight? Victoria Monday's Paranormal Activities. It's a coloring book, um, but it has everything paranormal. It's es- esoteric. There's puzzles. There's um, this is my favorite one. It says, "Ooh, there's an orb." You know, like, can you find it? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So, it's got games and puzzles and um, everything relates to anything in the paranormal world. And then I created um, five others. You know, I have some for kids, which have like Halloween things in them. So there's nothing scary or spooky in those. It's like Wolfman or Vampire, or Dracula, you know, yeah. Buddy, you know? Yeah. 
So, um, but then I thought, well, this is fun. What else am I going to do? So I created the fifth one, um, Stepping Beyond the Veil. So that's more esoteric. It has uh, like mandalas, um, sacred geometry, the power of numbers and all that kind of stuff. And um, then the sixth one is called The Awakening. And that was for my witchy friends. And so it has a do-it-yourself grimoire. Um, it has puzzles, of course, um, mandalas. You learn all about color magic, plant magic, herb magic, um, the power of intention, the power of words. And um, then I quit. I thought I'd do a book with words this time. So <laughs> then I wrote my new one. <laughs> I tell you what, though, the one with the grimoire in it, that was a, that the witch one that you have for all your friends, your oh, witchy okay. friends. I tell you what, yes, yeah, show, show that one. That is absolutely amazing. Oh, I tell you what, for a coloring book, guys, for a coloring book, for being like an adult, I would love to buy this and, and, and do this. No joke, because this is absolutely amazing. Please, Victoria, tell where they can get it to. I know I have your, your website oh. right, right below us, but you did say up something about Amazon. Yeah, you can find them on Amazon. Um, just look up, you know, my name, Victoria Monday. It, the whole series is called Victoria Monday's Paranormal Activities. Um, let's try, oh, yeah, this is my favorite one. But it's like the power of, of water. And so you learn about, you know, there's water. Oop. tells you all the yeah. things you know what water does and so as you're coloring you're actually subliminally subliminally learning all this so and it's fun i love it i love it okay. so yeah they can check out everything on um on amazon right at victoria monday mm -hmm. also you check out our website it's coming by right now below on the bottom victoria i just want to say thank you so much for coming on um oh, it's been you. absolutely awesome oh this has been so much fun thank you oh hi other person back there um <laughs> does he want a lolly yeah, does he want to <laughs> <Yeah, well, laughs> But um, so uh, yeah, no. But we just want to say thank you so much. <laughs> we just want to say thank you so much for coming thank on. You. That was great. That oh was no, so I've great. had a great time. It's been wonderful talking to you both. Thank you. Yeah, so no, much. we appreciate it. I know you were you were out all weekend and stuff like that. So we appreciate you taking the time to the chat to us. And like you know, we'll we'll stay in touch and stuff, and we'll have you on again sometime. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'd like that. It, it'll be fun. Maybe there'll be another okay. book. Who knows? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Awesome. Well, Victoria, thank you so much, and we will see you next time for sure. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Wow, man, that was totally awesome. I actually, I'm going to pick up that coloring book, man, because I tell you what, that was actually pretty cool. <laughs> I love that, man. No, I totally love that because honestly, I think that's so great. I think that's a great way to get, you know, not only kids involved, but also to get adults more involved in something also that's calming and relaxing. I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, therapy with coloring also as well that's out there. So, I mean, it's I've done even classes with it before and certain things for recovery. Yeah, about absolutely. It. There's a lot. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that people can use that for. I mean, and then to learn subliminally about the, you know, the spirit stuff is going to be absolutely awesome for any paranormal yeah, person. I think I'd be more inclined to buy the whole series of books. And then you've obviously got stuff to read as well and activities. Oh, to yeah. Do. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, 100%. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you contacting her and having her on. She's going to be absolutely, she's absolutely amazing. And I love it. Can't wait to have her on again. And first guest to ever really join us besides Ken to join us in a, you know, a making fun of situation with the peanut butter. That was perfect. Um, so, <laughs> that. So That's all because out. your dog your Yeah, 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 see? But I tell you what, that was absolutely awesome. But, guys, thank you so much for checking out Talking With The Source again. Follow us on all podcast listening platforms, on all social medias, and also on YouTube. And you can check out our shorts on TikTok. Um, so we greatly appreciate you guys all for watching. See you soon. See you soon.